Ladies, Jay and Silent Bob are in the his hills. This cinematic universe is filled with Hollywood A-listers. It spans over eight films, an animated series, comic books, video games. And no, it's not X-Men. Wolverine, snickety, snickety, snoring. This is Kevin Smith's cinematic universe known by fans as the View Esque Universe. Snoogans. Whether you like Kevin Smith or not, it's hard to ignore what he was able to accomplish. Often operating on shoestring budgets and limited resources, Smith was able to build a cinematic universe that is teeming with quirky characters, wild stories, and for some reason Alanis Morissette. Today, we're going to take a look at how Kevin Smith was able to create and sustain the biggest low-budget cinematic universe in film history. Tracing the roots of the Viewers universe opens the door to a masterclass in low-budget filmmaking. The 94 classic Clerks was made for a paltry $27,000. The key element in getting this film made, or getting any film made for that matter, is and was location. This was something that Smith already had at his disposal as the film was shot in the small New Jersey strip mall in which he was working at the time. Having the location on lock, Kevin Smith had just $5,000 to his name, which wouldn't be nearly enough to finish his film. He YOLO'd his credit rating and opened a bunch of credit cards with every intention of maxing them out. Now, it's worth pointing out that this is all incredibly irresponsible, but he did it. And he also gained an additional 3000 from FEMA after his car was destroyed in a flood. And instead of replacing it, just like that, Clerks was underway. And then, Clerks would end up laying the foundation of building Smith's Viewisk universe in two major ways. First, Clerks establishes a base reality for the Viewisk universe. Number one, by just being a good film that got people interested in Kevin Smith. But two, by establishing, well, a universe at all, which is an absolutely crucial element in grounding a universe and attaching it to something real. This allows later films like Dogma or Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back to venture into some seriously absurd places in a way that feels well earned. Wow, these guys are good. Secondly, Clerks introduces us to two key characters in the Viewers universe here. Jay, played by Jason Mewes, and of course, Silent Bob, played by Kevin Smith himself. These two characters are essentially the glue that holds the entire View CU together. The success of Clerks would eventually draw the attention of Universal, who immediately signed a deal for a follow-up film. That film would end up being Mallrats. Mallrats is an equally important film, as it takes the first steps in expanding Smith's cinematic universe. Taking it from a stagnant strip mall and placing it in an actual mall effectively allowed Smith to keep his signature blue-collar, slacker comedy style and transition it into a bigger world. I love the smell of commerce in the morning. The film introduces us to a couple of other key players in the Viewers universe, namely Jason Lee, Ben Affleck, and indie film darling Joey Lauren Adams. More importantly, however, is how the film develops the characters of Jay and Silent Bob again. In Clerks, they start out as just a couple of idiots hanging around outside a liquor store, but in Mallrats, they take on a new life as active and wily pranksters and play a pivotal role in the film's climax. While Mallrats isn't necessarily viewed as the strongest entry in Smith's catalog, it is a masterful demonstration of Kevin Smith's ability to create memorable characters and tap into Smith's passion for comic books and geek culture. Holy sh which would essentially drive the rest of his career. The heart of the Viewers universe beats from a place of passion and respect for the underdog in all of us, and it really captures the attitude of Generation X's rebellion against what was considered normal and acceptable at the time. Sure, the Viewers universe almost died with Mall Rats. The film underperformed and was widely panned by critics, but at least the risk was there again. With his first film, though, being an absolute success, and his second film, well, a flop, Kevin Smith had to find some type of Goldilocks zone for his third film. He's able to get an ultra-low budget green light for his third film, Chasing Amy which was a bit of a return to form for Smith's junior film. With a budget of just a quarter million dollars, Smith poured his heart into the irreverent romantic comedy to relative success. Chasing Amy has the most influence over the viewers' universe as a whole. The characters of Holden McNeil and Banky Edwards are key pieces in setting up the universe to come, but also setting up Smith's career and making sure that his risk-reward plays continued to pay off. But importantly, Edwards and McNeil end up being the creators of the Blunt Man and Chronic comic book fictional series that ends up being the driving force behind the entire plot of a future film, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, released four years later in 2001. Characters in Jay and Silent Bob are the only characters that are in the movie for just about five minutes, but in those five minutes, we get a layer of depth and humanity we haven't seen from these characters until this point. This is Kevin Smith's risk-taking sticking to its guns. It's these heartfelt moments that make us want to return for more of what Smith has to offer, and continue to see him operate relatively independently. Chasing Amy was a critical and commercial success, putting Kevin Smith back on track, and he was able to effectively do whatever he wanted for his next project. Rather than go back to make another raunchy blue-collar comedy, he sought to create a comedy of well, biblical proportions. He immediately began work on Dogma. It's strange to think that the biggest film in the Viewers universe has the most marginal impact on the overall story. Two angels almost cause an apocalypse, and it's almost never mentioned again in the entire series. Despite the film poking fun at religion, Kevin Smith still shows a ton of respect and passion for the Catholic Church. Again, this is what makes his comedy so great, it finds this amazing zone in which he 
can criticize and satirize something while still being, you know, a little bit more respectful than maybe something you get out of much more polarizing IPs. Like, you know, what's on your screen right now. This is a fine line that very few comedic filmmakers were walking at the time. This is an important film for Jay and Silent Bob, as it is the first time we as an audience are seeing them as heroes. The film also introduces us to Smith's fictional fast food chain and the location for Clerks 2 movies for the very first time. At this point, it's clear to see Smith's viewers universe, a real cinematic universe coming together in a meaningful way. Dogma really showcases Smith's ability to weave poignant and informed commentary into the plot of a film. So this is really the spice that the viewers universe recipe needed. Smith's ability to weave metaphor and religious mythology into a script that also comments on poverty, greed, sexuality, feminism, and morality is a masterstroke. By masterstroke, I don't mean that the script or the film is masterful, but what I do mean is that it is the clearest statement of Kevin Smith's talent that we might see in all of his catalog, at least up till now. Many of you Askew fans consider this to be his best overall film in terms of quality. But with another success comes more risk, and maybe you're starting to see a trend here. In 2001, the Viewers universe will come together for the first time in a real way, like Avengers almost, in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. One, two. One, two, three, four, noinch, noinch, noinch. noinch. Film opens at the quick stop with Dante and Randall from Clerks bantering as if they've never left. Are you even supposed to be here today? Don't get me started. Jay and Silent Bob are quickly sent on their quest to stop the Bluntman and Chronic movie after a brief conversation with Brody from All Rats. Would you like a chocolate covered pretzel? and Olden McNeil and Chasing Amy. Bung! <laughs> they end up confronting Banky Edwards at the end of the film. Banky f***ing Edwards, just the mother we came to see. It's the first time we see all these view askew elements together and it does some amazing things. The film is essentially Kevin Smith penning a love letter to the fans of his films that have stuck with him since the beginning. And that's another big part of what makes the view askew universe so great. Kevin Smith's ability to communicate and understand what his fans want, and maybe not always what critics want and then deliver that thing, the former thing, in spades. And it wasn't easy, frankly. This was maybe the hardest film for Kevin Smith to make. Production on Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back wasn't pleasant. Behind the scenes, Jason Mewes was at the peak of his heroin addiction and was causing a lot of problems on set. This culminated in Kevin Smith presenting Mewes with two options, either check into rehab or never speak to him again. Mewes chose the former and Smith rewarded him by putting all of his energy into Clerks 2. At this point, Kevin Smith had developed a plan of attack. It's risk, 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 and risk independently. And we'll get to why this is so important as we wrap this up. Clerks 2 was released in 2006 to much fanfare as fans wanted to see more of the characters that made them fall in love with the Askew universe in the first place. It expands upon the characters of Randall, Dante, Jay, Silent Bob. In a way, Clerks 2 is a conduit for Smith fans to feel like they are going and growing with Dante and Randall. Jay and Silent Bob return to their roots, serve up some seriously nostalgic non sequitur moments. 15 bucks, little man, put that shit in my hand. And it's a nice return to form for a duo that was as recently as a few movies ago fighting literal angels and demons. Kevin Smith would eventually return to the Viewers universe one more time in the 2019's Jay and Silent Bob reboot, which, you know, wasn't great and felt a little tired. But what the film lacks in substance, it makes up for fan service. The film feels like a celebration or some kind of reunion with almost a quarter century's worth of characters as the attendees. While there's some debate of the quality of Kevin Smith's work, it's hard to scoff at what he's been able to create with the Viewers universe. He isn't making films because he wants to win awards or accolades, he's making films for the people that like his films and for himself because he is one of those people. He's making film for the social outcasts of the 90s. He's making films for the people that grew up without maybe a place to fit in. He made it okay to geek out about stuff. He gave fans a sense of community and something to look forward to. He captures the voice of that childlike geek in all of us and brings back the characters we know and love time and again, right when we need them. The lesson here in all of this is that Kevin Smith took a risk. And when it paid off, he didn't get comfortable. He just continued to take more risks. And when it didn't pay off, what did he do? Well, he took more risks and that's kind of art. The second you get comfortable in your art, the second you get comfortable in your passion is the second that it suffers. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and burn your life savings and remortgage your house to make an independent film. That's irresponsible. But what I am saying is that sometimes things don't work out and it doesn't mean the risk didn't pay off. Adventure, excitement, Jedi craves not these things. You probably learn something and sometimes things do work out and it doesn't mean you stop taking risks. Art is dependent on risk and the people that fall in love with your work are hoping you'll continue to take them regardless of the people that get comfortable with what you've made. The Viewers Universe is the largest low budget cinematic universe ever created and it only exists because Kevin Smith made sure it would. Lady, 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 Jay and Silent Bob are at your his house. Well, guys, that's it for this episode of Nostalgia. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button down below. If you enjoyed it, as always, hit subscribe. That way you don't miss anything. Today's episode was written by the amazing Chris. You can check out the last video he wrote here. It's the Scrubs one. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next video.